Hello. Let's just swap these out. How's everyone doing? That was really intense. <laughs> uh, so, my name is Anita Sarkeesian. So, I'm going to start by telling you a simple truth. Um, my work deconstructs the representations of women in the media through a feminist lens. A loosely coordinated group of very angry gamers. Hacking and doxing and rape and death threats. In my role as executive director, I manage um, two full-time staff members, two full-time staff members, and a whole host of consultants and contractors. Feminist Frequency still produces our educational media criticism. Educational media criticism. I regularly consult with major social media companies in developing solutions to curb harassment on their platforms. I'm quite, I'm quite proud of what I have built and what I've accomplished with this work so far. These are all facts, 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 facts. You have a single fact to back that up. Thousands of my detractors spend countless hours concocting ever more elaborate conspiracies. Here is one of the most popular. Images like these are repeatedly created and passed around. I am merely a pretty face who mindlessly repeats the work of an ominous male mastermind. Mastermind. There's so many of these. <laughs> I've been playing video games since I was five years old. I'm not a fan of video games. I actually had to learn a lot about video games in the process of making this. These are all facts. My dad was a computer networking engineer, so our house was always filled with the latest machines loaded with all sorts of games. Um, I was also fond of Nintendo and especially loved Mario and Kirby. Mario Kirby, yeah. People play games in this audience? Um, I'm not a fan of video games. I actually had to learn a lot about video games in the process of making this. These are all facts. Throughout my teenage and college years, I continued to play games on and off. Later in graduate school, I studied under a prominent game scholar, prominent game scholar, and took courses focusing on gaming and education. In short, I've been playing games for most of my life. I'm not a fan of video games. I actually had to learn a lot about video games in the process of making this. These are all facts. So here's a short outtake from that video in which I realized that making a fundraising pitch while playing Rayman Origins is way more difficult than you would think. Am I recording? Have you ever noticed that I can't play games and do this at the same time because <laughs> I'm distracted? Okay. Because the light on the Xbox logo is not clearly visible, they have deduced that not only I'm not not only that I am a fake uh, gamer who just pretends to play games, but also that I don't even know how to turn on a controller. The reality that LEDs don't show up very well on video when filming in a room with bright sunlight just didn't occur to them, I guess. Truly, some of the internet's finest detectives right here. So here's a question for you. Are these games? Are you sure? You sound a little reluctant. Yes. Have you played some of these games? Do you like some of these games? Yeah, me too. These are some of my favorite games. I'm not a fan of video games. I actually had to learn a lot about video games in the process of making this. And yet, in some gaming circles, playing these games does not make you a real gamer. There is a very gendered stigma attached to what are thought of as more casual interactive experiences. That sentiment actively works to alienate women and other marginalized communities from mainstream gaming, and frankly makes us feel unwelcome. Straight white men have the luxury of being able to embrace gaming culture unconditionally because so many games are made specifically for them. Women, by and large, don't have that same luxury. Luxury. So even though I was actually playing a lot of games, these kinds of games, I still, at various times in my life, refused to call myself a gamer. And I didn't identify as a fan of the medium as a whole, which I think is not that uncommon of an experience for young women. The denial of women's lived experiences is a tactic used to position us as outsiders and invalidate our right to fully participate in male-dominated spaces. Our right to male-dominated spaces. So, here's one last reality. I am an expert on the depictions of women in video games. Any Google search for my name will return thousands of YouTube videos from men who have obsessively, who has, hmm, who have obsessively combed through every frame of my videos in a desperate attempt to try and find that one smoking gun, which will then invalidate all of my criticisms once and for all. 
Need <laughs> needless to say, they have not found their smoking gun. I'm not a fan of video games. I actually had to learn a lot about video games in the process of making this. Uh, my analysis is very well researched. This is one of the main reasons why each episode takes so long to produce. Still in the comments, under any internet article that mentions my work, you will find a flock of angry gamers pointing to one game in particular, Hitman Absolution. It originates from a 42-year-old YouTube user who by all accounts hasn't played the game at all, ha hasn't played Hitman at all, but is obsessed with ranting against feminism. His video is brimming with logical fallacies. So, if you'll indulge me for a moment, I'd like to first show you a brief clip of part of my original argument. Nope. So a bunch of gamers were very unhappy about my analysis and allege that my video is deliberately misleading. They claim that the game does not encourage players to attack civilians, but instead punishes players for such actions. And therefore, by showing footage of the player character killing exotic dancers, that I was deceptively trying to make the game appear sexist. Everything about this claim is false. It's common for straw man arguments like these to focus on minute details, which are then blown out of proportion in an attempt to create a scandal. First, in my video, the exotic dancers are not being killed, they're being pacified, which is what the game calls it when you knock someone out without killing them. The game indicates this in the top left-hand corner of the screen. Next, the game does not punish players for non-lethal pacification. The point system in Hitman Absolution functions as a way to track performance stats. It has nothing to do with success or failure of the mission. All you need to do to pass a level is to kill your intended target and get out alive. Furthermore, the game provides ways to negate minor statistical penalties. In fact, if you keep watching my playthrough, you'll notice that the 140-point pacification deduction is nullified when the unconscious bodies are hidden inside one of the many containers that the game designers have placed in each level for that purpose, meaning there is no penalty. This is really basic stuff in the Hitman series. Finally, the assertion that the game does not incur does not encourage players to attack civilians is simply incorrect. It most certainly does, both implicitly and sometimes explicitly. Hitman Absolution is what's called a stealth sandbox game. That means it's designed to be played in many different ways. Neutralizing NPCs is a core mechanic in the Hitman series. It's often necessary um, in order to clear a path to objectives or prevent a character who's seen you from raising the alarm. In this stage, for example, there's a specific challenge that explicitly encourages players to knock out a stripper and drag her body out of the line of sight. This action then allows the player to hide inside the stripper cake and wait for the targets to arrive before popping out and murdering them all in slow motion. <laughs> the whole point of the game is to offer a wide range of possibilities for experimentation, which is why even if you murder civilians, you don't get a game over. Saying that this game doesn't want players to interact with civilians in the only ways that are provided is like saying that Grand Theft Auto discourages players from stealing cars because sometimes they get a police wanted level for doing so in Grand Theft Auto. The developers obviously put a tremendous amount of work into designing and implementing these systems. They, did so with the they didn't do so with the hopes that no player would ever use them. As I said in my original video on the topic, game systems and everything in them, including sexually objectified female characters, exist to be played with. So there's absolutely no truth to the allegation that I misrepresented this game. Okay, enough of that. Those who repeat these false claims do not understand my argument, or perhaps more likely, they are just trying to pass off bad faith straw man arguments as legitimate criticism, while making no real attempt to engage with the substance of my analysis. My head, I'd be scratching while my thoughts were busy hatching if I only had a brain. Women learn to doubt their own talent and skills, internalizing the belief that they don't belong in these spaces. The constant undermining and microaggressions, as well as straight up harassment, pressure many women to abandon their professional fields altogether, making it impossible to reach true gender equity. You can't be neutral on a moving train. Men must step up to do the conscious and intentional work of listening to women and actively giving women the benefit of the doubt. Actively giving women the benefit of the doubt. Welcoming, supportive, and respectful for people of all genders. Straight white men.